For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take each. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sought, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the great privilege that you give us today as we come around the table of the Lord together to commemorate the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to show and proclaim among ourselves and to the world that Jesus is coming again. We pray, o Lord, that your spirit will be present with us here and you grant us the right attitude and the solemnity that is required so that the benefit of taking such a communion together will be ours in Jesus' name. We believe you have answered us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before we take the Lord's Supper together, We'll have a brief moment to share together on the redemptive benefits through the Pascal Lamb. I just read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. But we need to know that the historical setting of the institution of the Lord's Supper is often overlooked by Christians and churches. This most beautiful celebration was instituted on the very night the Lord was betrayed and arrested. No wonder then the church, in coming together to celebrate this, we come with all solemnity. In the midst of the world's evil, God established his good. That night when the Lord's Supper was instituted tells us that it's in the midst of Satan's wickedness that God plants his holiness. Just before his betrayal and arrest, Christ established the symbol of his gracious sacrifice, telling us that it's in the midst of Satan's absolute worst, the condemnation of the Son of God on the cross, that God accomplished his absolute best, the sacrifice for the redemption of the world through that cross. The celebration of the Lord's Supper then reminds us of our redemption, and it proclaims so clearly and loudly the truth of redemption to the world around us. We are to so enjoy the benefits of redemption in our lives that the world around us will see and desire those benefits too. If the benefits of the old covenant enjoyed by Israel made the Gentiles to know that Israel was specially blessed and favored, our enjoyment of the benefits of this new covenant should attract sinners to the gospel. That's why, very briefly, I will share with you, number one, benefits of the broken body. The benefits of the broken body. Number two, blessings in the shed blood. Blessings 
in his shed blood. Number three, barriers to the believer's blessings. As we look at benefits of the broken body, we look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it and gave to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. As students of scripture, you understand, that means this represents my body. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Remember, it was that very night in which he was betrayed. And he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take each, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Those two words, for you, are very significant. Jesus gave his body so that the benefit of his sacrifice will be yours. If I can just remind you, that when the Israelites took of the Paschal Lamb, sicknesses and weaknesses were taken away from them. Immediately after eating, the psalmist tells us there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Jesus Christ, our Passover, is infinitely greater than the Lamb of Israel's Passover. By his tribes were healed. Sicknesses and weaknesses should be taken away from us as we remember Christ's sacrifice. It's not just the eating that gives us that, but as we appropriate the redemptive rights we have by faith. Israel did not remain another day in Egyptian bondage after eating the flesh of the Passover lamb. If Christ, the lamp of God, is greater, superior to the lamb that Israel took, why should any believer remain one more minute or hour in bondage after commemorating, remembering, believing, partaking of, and appropriating the redemptive rights we have through the broken body. Deliverance and freedom then from every form of bondage is part of our redemptive rights. Believers who celebrate the Lord's Supper by faith, by faith, and not in fear. You see, there may be those who do not know the importance and the significance and the benefit of the Lord's Supper. And they look at the negative side of things. And they come in fear and trembling. Oh yes, there should be sobriety. As we come together here tonight and we throw our minds back. On the very fact that that very night, Jesus Christ was betrayed. Of course, it's going to call for some sobriety. But sobriety does not cancel faith. We still have faith in the Lord. And if we have that faith, we will experience total freedom from satanic affliction. And from demonic oppression. 
and from the enemy's bondage. Here is the commandment of the Lord. He said, this do in remembrance of me. This is a command from the lips of our Lord himself. Our Lord's expectation is much more than simply recalling what happened at that time. Or just bringing something to mind. To truly remember is to recapture the reality, the meaning, the purpose, the significance, the benefit of Christ's sacrifice. When the Lord said, this do in remembrance of me. Was he just telling us, remember that I've gone to heaven. Remember who I am. Yes, he might be telling us that. But he was, telling, he was also telling us, recapture the reality of my sacrifice. Recapture the meaning, the purpose of that sacrifice. Recapture the benefit, the significance of that sacrifice. If you turn to your Bible, there's no time to do that. If you were able to turn to your Bible and look at the way that word remember is used in uh, such cases, you will know that you are recapturing something so significant. Do you remember how the Lord told Noah, Genesis chapter 9 verses 14 and 15, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth and the bow, that is the rainbow, shall be seen in the cloud i will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every creature of all flesh verse 16 and the bow shall be in the cloud and i will look upon it and I, that i may remember the everlasting covenant between god and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth which means i will remember Therefore, I will not bring the flood of water to wipe humanity away again. You see, the remembrance is to recapture the good thing, the benefit, and the promises that he gave so that the world will receive the benefit. In Exodus chapter 2, God heard, verse 24, they are groaning, and God remembered his covenant. Did he just remember there was a covenant he made with Israel, Isaac, and Jacob? He remembered and he took action. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. You see, when we talk of remembering in this way, you are recapturing the things that had been done by the Lord. In Psalm 63, verse 6, when I remember... When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Psalm 77 verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. So then when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. He is saying, as you do this and you take this bread in your hand, you recapture what Jesus went through. You recapture the broken body. You recapture the stripes that were laid upon him. And you recapture the promise that he gave. By his stripes we are healed. And I believe tonight that as we take the bread, please, we are not saying at the Catholic Church that the bread is transformed into the real body of Jesus, we don't say that. We're just saying, you see the representation in your hand. And it says, do this in remembrance of me. This is a symbol, a representation of the body that was broken for you. And then you remember he suffered. And when the children of Israel took of that Paschal lamb, there was not one feeble person among them. Therefore, as you remember that tonight, there will be no one feeble person among us. Amen. That's why if you are a true believer, you are sick and you are still in the hostel, or you are weak, if you cannot move very fast, let somebody over there bring you here. 
a real believer. Because the moment you take that, appropriating the benefits of the broken body, you will not be feeble again. You will not be weak again. To remember Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross is to meditate on one, the purpose of his sacrifice. Two, to meditate on the provision of our redemptive benefits. Three, to meditate on the power of the cross and to appropriate his promises by faith. Tonight, as we're going to be together, rejoicing yet in solemnity and remembering what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. You remember the purpose, the provision, the power, the promises. And you appropriate everything by faith. Point number two. Blessings in the shed blood. Blessings in the shed blood. Matthew again. Chapter 26. From verse 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. All of you, drink of it. And you remember this was the very first time. And he wanted all his disciples. There are many people that are so afraid. And they have sent themselves from the Lord's Supper. They do not understand that coming together in fellowship and communion to take the Lord's Supper is going to make you to have the benefits that you might have even lost for a long time. But such people will say, how about 1 Corinthians 11? When it says, if any man takes unworthily, yes, that is there as a caution for any of us just rushing in without any spiritual preparation. Or for any of us not discerning the Lord's body and making the bread and the uh, wine to look like the ordinary meal that we take. We must understand there is a difference. And as we come by faith and appropriate the benefits, you will never be the same again. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. When we talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible clearly reveals seven benefits that you have. I'm just going to mention them to you. We have no time to uh, really preach. We're just doing this to make you know the significance and importance of what we're doing tonight. There are blessings in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, which every believer should continue to enjoy as his redemptive benefit. Number one, forgiveness of all the sins of every sinner who repents and who believes in Christ's atoning blood. You believe, you accept, you appropriate it, you take it to yourself, and you confess it was for me that he did it. Then there's forgiveness. Romans 3, 23 to 25 says, For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely. Freely. You don't pay any price for it. Freely by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God has set forth a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. You have faith in his blood. Then the sins are taken away. The devil may come with accusation. The devil may say, do you think it's so easy to get forgiveness like that? He's the accuser of the brethren. 
when I see the blood, I will pass over you. While the children of Israel had done what the Lord wanted them to do, and they put the sign of the blood on the lintels of their houses, while they were inside the house, the devil might be torturing them, tormenting them, especially for those who are weak in their consciences. And the devil might be saying, do you think that the blood just outside there is enough? Don't you think you've gone too far that just that mark of the blood alone is going to, it's not going to shield you from the devastation, the destruction coming upon Egypt? But the word stands when I see the blood. I will pass over you. That's the number one benefit. Number two, reconciliation with God. The enmity between God and man is removed through the blood of Christ. Have you read Romans chapter 5 verse 10? For if we, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Death of his son. The shedding of the blood. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Number three. Redemption from Satan's domain. That means you are purchased by the blood of Christ, which is the price of our redemption. First Peter 1.18, For as much as ye know, that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Redemption from Satan's domain. You shouldn't be under the domain of Satan. All those things should have been taken away completely because you are under the mark of the blood. Number four, translation into Christ's kingdom. Becoming kings and priests unto God. Having privilege in prayer before God and having authority on earth as king. As priest, you have the privilege of prayer before God. As king, you have authority on earth. Colossians 1.13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Number five, cleansing, sanctification, perfection of believer's heart. Hebrews 13, 12. For Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people. With what? With his own blood. That's how you are sanctified. He shed the blood. And the blood is still flowing fresh. You can't see it. You appropriate it by faith. And if you discover carnality of the nature that ought not to be there, you can go under that blood that is still flowing and you will get rid of that Adamic thing. In verse 20 now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work. You see, it is the blood that does that for us. It's not in your strength. It's not in your power. Don't say, I am weak. You are strong in Christ. Number six, protection from God's wrath and judgment in time and through eternity. You are protected by that blood. You are called to mind. When the angel of death passed over Egypt, only one thing, when I see the blood, in Exodus 12, 11, and thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it, referring to uh, the Lord's uh, the, the, um, Pascal lamb, you'll eat it in haste. Now verse 13, and the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses 
wherein ye are, and when I see the blood. This is talking of the blood of ordinary animal. How much more precious is the blood of Jesus Christ? You have nothing to fear. God loves you. Christ died for you. If things are there to be straightened out, why don't you come before the Lord and plead the blood of the Lamb? When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Number seven, dominion over Satan's power. And victory over all his agents. Tonight, as we come together to take the Lord's Supper, if it so happens that you have been tormented by Satan's agents, as you appropriate your right in the blood of the Lamb, all the power of Satan, the affliction, the dominion will be broken in Jesus' name. In Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. You will overcome the dragon, the old serpent, the accuser of the brethren, the adversary, and the one that went to put all those things upon Job, you will overcome. You'll be free from all of them by the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And he loved not their lives unto the dead. And uh, I don't know whether you've seen this promise in Jeremiah before. If you have not seen it, you need to see it. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Maybe you have been seeing that Satan was having the upper hand. We come together tonight and we take the Lord's Supper. And as you'll take that cup in your hand, you might want to, if you feel better, to close your eyes so you can visualize. You close your eyes. You visualize your picture. This that I hold in my hand. I see this one, and it's a representation of the blood that was shed for me on the cross of Calvary. Then you lift up your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you. Because of the blood, the devil cannot have dominion over me anymore. As we celebrate the communion, we remember Christ's work on the cross. We partake in fellowship with Christ. And with one another, we proclaim salvation and gospel benefits to the world. And we anticipate the return of the Lord when he will drink the fruit of the vine new with us in his father's kingdom. Because he said in Matthew 26, 29, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine with you, until that day when I drink it new, what are the next two words? With you. As you take it today, your eyes of faith, your heart will reach out to the future. And you say, here we are now. I believe in Christ, but I cannot see him physically. I take this as a representation of his body and his blood. And this is a prelude to the one I'm going to take in the kingdom in the future. You will be there. Yeah. Until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Before we pray and take the supper, point number three, barriers to the believer's blessings. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and in verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread 
and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat. He doesn't say because of the fear of taking unworthily get up and run away. No. It's for you. Are you not in the kingdom? Are you not a child of God? Have you not seen Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary? Don't you believe in your heart it was for you he died? Don't you remember that song? Broken for me. Broken for me. There on the cross. The body was broken for me. Then he shed the blood for you also. And then the third stanza, reason for me, reason for me. It's because he's alive, you also, you're alive in Christ in Jesus' name. It doesn't say you shouldn't take it. You may discover there are some things to get rid of. And it says, but let a man examine himself. If he discovers there is anything wrong, that's why we give some little time. You go before the Lord and say, Lord... Would I miss this opportunity? I so much see you now on the cross. Although you have come out of the cross and you have resurrected and you are now in heaven. But you told me to do this in remembrance of you. And here we are, united body from these various countries and from different parts of this nation. What a singular privilege. Just examine yourself. After the examination... Let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But make sure you examine yourself. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. As we come together tonight, we call you to discern the Lord's body. One, the body local here. And don't have any grudge against anybody. Don't have any hatred against anyone. This is part of that body locally. Make sure you remove from your heart anything that is not of God in fellowship and love. Then also, this is not the whole body. There is part of the body of Christ not here with us. You remember any of those members who have anything against? Get rid of any animosity or grudge and love. And the Lord is able to pour his love into your heart. Maybe you say, I cannot love the way I ought to love. Why don't you just open up the heart and say, Lord, I bring my heart that is almost empty of love and pour your love in there. He'll do it. You'll just find that you love people you couldn't love before. And as you discern the Lord's body like that, also go beyond that and discern the Lord's body on the cross. And just as you pray, you say, Oh Lord, I know that even the vilest of sinners, you will redeem and save and forgive. And I'm not vilest of sinners, I'm a child of God, but this was there, I discovered this, I discovered this. Oh Lord, cleanse me. Do you know immediately it will cleanse you? And you'll be ready and we'll take the Lord's Supper together. That's why before we take the Lord's Supper tonight, we'll examine ourselves thoroughly, looking honestly at our hearts for anything that should not be there and be cleansed from all evil. Our motives our attitude toward the Lord, our attitude towards his word, towards his people, shall all come under private scrutiny before the Lord. And the benefits of full redemption will be yours tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.